The following is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Change. Life's constant. This season, our tournament reflects such. Back in 53, seven schools initiated change, and a new conference was born. Over the years, this conference has grown in size, stature. The Cinderella team has done it. The Glass Slipper fit. And opportunity. Now, after 53 seasons, once again, there is change and opportunity for new stars, new rivalries, and captured memories that will span lifetimes. For years, we sailed with the pilot. We charted familiar waters. Now, we stretch from the tip of the Sunshine State northward to the banks of the Charles. 12 schools truly comprising the coast for which this conference was named. Fitting that with all this growth, we return now to the city where it all began. They're all here. We might as well play. Some say the more things change, the more they stay the same. True, for despite all the changes, much remains constant. This gathering will still be a glowing showcase of human endeavor, of tradition, of excellence. Welcome to a theater of athletic drama that will never change. The Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. We welcome you to Tournament Town, Greensboro, North Carolina, the site here of the 53rd Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. Two games tonight here on quarterfinal Friday. North Carolina, the number two seed, taking on Virginia. Then in the nightcap tonight, Boston College, the three seed, will play Maryland. Hi, everybody. Mike Hockwood here, along with Bobby Crimmins, will be your host throughout this tournament. Bobby, how about North Carolina? They have won seven in a row, including a shellacking of Virginia two games ago. But, Mike, Virginia has great guards, and Virginia's been watching Wake Forest, so I feel Virginia has a chance. All right, let's take a look at our Toyota brackets, get you caught up. Miami, uh, Wake Forest, Virginia, and Maryland all won games yesterday to get to this point today here on quarterfinal Friday. A lot of excitement in Greensboro. One semifinal has been set. Tonight, the matchup for the second semifinal is on the line. With the defending national champions, their first ACC title since 1998 will set a new ACC championship mark. How ironic. Their fiercest rivals, the Duke Blue Devils, are bidding for the same ACC record, 16 conference championships. First, they have to get past the team the media predicted would finish last in the league. But newcomer Dave Leto and the upstart Wahoos hope to have the last laugh. Speaking of newcomers, the team made up of kids not heavily recruited and from the left coast, the Boston College Eagles get their first taste of what is the conference tournament, all the others empty. The 53rd edition of the annual tradition. The ACC tournament is set to add pages to what is the lore known as the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. ACC Legends brought to you by Food Lion. 20 to 2 run. They were on top by 15 in control throughout this game. Doug, this is the Wake Forest team people expected to see all season. And this is an embarrassing performance by NC State. Just a complete egg that they have laid. And uh, I don't know what to make of the Wolfpack team. They shot the ball poorly. They didn't play defense. They had their heads down. And Wake Forest was the better team from tip to finish. Uh, how about North Carolina and Virginia, the game that's coming up next here in North Carolina? I mean, we've seen them get better and better as the year has gone on, but kind of the shot heard around the world with the win over Duke last week. How good is this Carolina team? I think they're good. I think they're solid. I mean, look, they've gotten great contribution from Rayshon Terry, from David Noel, two guys that, you know, at least Terry was on the bench and played just a bit in the national championship game. Obviously, Noel was a guy who contributed more, but Tyler Hansbrough's the story to this team. His ability to score inside, keep the ball high, hold position. He finishes 
is he's a man. He's a 20-year-old freshman who plays like he's just a bit older than a freshman. He's he's a tremendous. I mean, look, ESPN.com. Every one of the analysts, we all picked him freshman of the year. It's it's without question. He has been the biggest name to step into college basketball and contribute, and he's done it in the ACC. I'll be interested to see how this team comes out of the gate because we've seen so many teams who got to buy come out sluggish, not just in this conference in the Big East and the SEC and and throughout the landscape of college basketball. Well, North Carolina has not won the ACC tournament since 1998. They did win a fairly important tournament, though, last season. J.R. Reynolds and the Cavaliers hoping to get the upset over Carolina. Tar Heels have won 10 of 11. We'll get you back out to Greensboro for the tip next. Well, we'll see which one of those keys holds true here tonight. We're about ready to go with the first game of the night session. So it's time now to bring in the gentleman who will call the action of the two games here tonight. Here are Tim Brandt and Mike Jaminski. All right, Michael, thank you very much. You heard their predictions. Look in your crystal ball. What do you see? Well, I think Virginia needs to calm this game down, keep North Carolina under 70 points. The Tar Heels haven't played in a week. I think the first four to eight minutes, they want to go out and establish their tempo. Take a look at the food line starting lineups. These lineups have been pretty well set. J.R. Reynolds and Sean Singletary do so much of the scoring for Virginia. And Adrian Joseph, Jason Kane, and Nikolauskas have really made themselves visible here down the stretch. For North Carolina, the food line starting lineups looks like this. You have to start with Tyler Hansborough. What a year he's had. First team all ACC, rookie of the year. He's joined by Rashawn Terry, David Noel, Bobby Frazier, and Wes Miller. Right now, let's take you over to Scott Puzwanski, who wants to talk about one of the leaders of the Tar Heels. Well, that guy, of course, is David Noel. And I'll tell you, the Carolina system is built around seniors stepping up as leaders on the court and producing off the court as well. David Noel has fit that bill without question. As you look at all the statistical categories, David Noel has certainly increased in his numbers production from rebounds to points to uh, minutes played to starting everything. But what the Carolina coaching staff is more impressed with than anything is his unselfishness. David Noel has taken it upon himself not to try to force things but rather try to teach these young kids and help them get better. And I really think that is the reason why Carolina is on the run they are right now. Well, North Carolina comes in as the number two seed in a record of 21 and 6, 12 and 4 in the ACC. Virginia Cavaliers, 15 and 13, the number seven seed and 7 and 9. Here's a look at David Noel, the 6'6", 232 pounder. And here's a look at Roy Williams. He Team that's won 21 and only lost six. And there's the man, Tyler Hansbro, all ACC first team and the freshman of the year. And he and Mikalakskis at midcourt. As Brian Kersey throws it up, Duke Edsel and Bernard Clinton are other two officials. And here we go on quarterfinal Friday night from Greensboro. Point for Virginia boils down to one simple thing. Can they control the pace of this ball game? Carolina averages 80 points a game. Virginia only 66. They've got to keep it out of a rhythm to have a chance. Hansbro on top will drop it off to Frazier. Guarded by Singletary. Here's Noel. Packing it inside. Hansbro throws that elbow out. It just roughs his way inside. And the follow comes in from David Noel. It's a lot worse than he's admitting or I know right now, but again, he's the most ultra competitive guard in this league. He has guts. Miller, Frazier in the corner. Be interesting to see with a little more experience on the Virginia side how the young guards of North Carolina are able to handle them. So far, so good, but they played very well defensively against everybody they played above their age. Beyond their years, Rayshon Terry misses a three. Singletary pulls it down, and the Cavaliers will slow it as they get into the front court. Now Singletary threw three Tar Heels, and he's bumped pretty well, and a foul inside. Well, that's the threat that Sean Singletary is when he has that ball in his hands. A guy that you have to defend sometimes five, six, seven dribbles. You stop him on his first penetration, he'll back it up, boom, and go at the rim one more time on you. He had had a stretch of 17 double-figure games. That was broken in the regular season finale when he only had eight, and he only had eight last night as well. Eight points, six rebounds, and four assists. So it wasn't like he had a terrible night, but when you're averaging 17 and a half a game and you've got 116 assists coming in, it wasn't a normal night. And that's what Doris talked about, and Jimmy just mentioned as well, but he's got the first two for the Cavaliers, and we're tied at two. Strong drive to the basket, rejected out of there by Kane. Singletary all the way over Frazier. Mikuloskis keeps it alive. And the big guy goes back up. Loose ball picked up by Miller. 
Gets it ahead to Terry. And Singletary almost came up with a steal. Brad, I think uh, North Carolina, probably the best in the country again this year at running it right up your backside. Either after a make or a miss, they are constantly in attack mode with that basketball. And they did that against Duke Saturday night in Durham. 83-76 to spoil senior nights at Cameron Indoor. Hopefully you joined us on one of the six networks we had that game on. <laughs> yeah, if you missed it, you had to try to miss it. That's right. It? Here's Singletary for three. Got it. You know, it was a terrific job also by a Joseph to turn down a pretty good shot to get his teammate a much better shot. So Virginia by three. Terry's going to try another triple, and he's long on this one as well. He's missed two from the same spot. Reynolds just blowing by Frazier up off the glass. Somebody deflected it. Nikolaskis with a follow. And North Carolina a little out of sorts early. Boy, Mikulowski is awfully good in this conference at getting rebounds below the rim. He's a power guy that gets a lot done on effort. Carolina continues to take the long shots and not connect, and Virginia jumps on him for an early 7-2 lead. I guarantee you the first time out, Roy Williams will introduce those guys to Tyler Hansborough and say, do you realize he's on our squad? <laughs> he's got to get a touch. Every time down, if at all possible. Here's Kane, double team, trapped. Takes a dribble. Roy Williams wanted a double dribble called. Now everybody goes to the deck trying to pick up the loose ball. And may have been a timeout called by North Carolina if they did have possession down in the bottle of that scrum. 16.53 remaining early. Virginia by five. Virginia out in front early, 7-2. Jimmy, they do a nice job getting Singletary open for the jumper. Well, they've done a nice job of sharing that basketball, making the, the not the extra pass, but the right pass. You're going to see the uh, initial push. And Joseph right here turns down an average shot because he's really a better three-point shooter than two-point to get a much better three-point look out of Singletary. That's not the extra pass. That's the right pass in basketball. Hansborough inside, a little awkward with a shot. Singletary chases down the loose ball, and Virginia's getting to every loose ball. Sean's going to take a pull-up three, and Nikolaskis keeps it alive. He gets more rebounds below the rim than anyone in this league, Nikolaskis. Joseph. This time, Hansborough in a good position to get the rebound. It's going to be Jason Kane picking up his first foul. Let's check in with Doris. Well, Brad, just to follow up on something that uh, Jimmy just said, when this team beat North Carolina back on January 19th in Charlottesville, they talked specifically about their ability to make the right pass, controlling the tempo, getting deep into that shot clock. Why? Because you keep Carolina out of transition. The pace of this one, as you said, guys, so important. Well, what Doris is saying, Brad, is if you can't outscore North Carolina, which very few teams in the country can, then you have to do something to offset the tempo of the game. Hansbro finally gets a touch offensively. And he's going to be fouled from behind by Mikuloskis. Big fella had a whale of a game last night, a season-high 12 rebounds to go with 11 points. He was a big reason they were able to beat Virginia Tech. He needs this game to be loosely officiated. Carolina's one for nine right now from the floor. Reynolds, nice entry pass underneath. And the reverse layup goes for Diani. Well, he knew he couldn't go over the top of Hansborough, so he just a little shoulder fake, and Hansborough bit and slipped to the rim on him. Nine straight Virginia points. And they have quieted this, for the most part, pro North Carolina crowd. Here's Hansborough on the outside, rattled out on it. Joseph might be guilty of over the back. And the Virginia fans don't like that call, but I think that's what it's going to be, and that'll be his first. So already Cavaliers have been able to go to their bench with the early lead, and even Mamadi Diani getting in on the act with a reverse layup. Virginia by seven. See him. It's Virginia early on North Carolina. Greensboro for the 21st time host of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament out of the 53 years, the most by any one city. And right in the heart of ACC country, everybody loves it here in Greensboro, and we love being back. You take a look at how many titles have been won by various teams in the Greensboro Coliseum. The most ACC tournaments won. North Carolina is tops with eight. And then Duke, Maryland State, and Wake Forest. As for Virginia, they've advanced to the championship twice in Greensboro, 1977 and 1982.
You know what, though, if you're Dave Lado, with all that history that Carolina has in this tournament and how highly they're ranked, you tell your kids since last night's ball game till tip off tonight, we don't have to be better than North Carolina for a month. We don't have to be better than North Carolina for the entire tournament. We just have to be better one time right. for two hours tonight. That's what he's banking on. And they're way better in the first four minutes and change. As you see, North Carolina is in a terrible slump right now in the last four minutes. For those of you at home doing the math and saying if this is 21 tournaments in Greensboro that didn't add up to 20 on the graphic, it's because South Carolina at one time was part of the Atlantic Coast Conference and they want a tournament here. So just for you folks out there that were uh, doing the addition. Talked to Roy Williams today for about 30 minutes in our hotel. He said, Jimmy, this is the team that I did not want to draw. Why do you want to play a team that you just hammered by 45 points? <laughs> Good point. Singletary for three around a pick. Flew right by his own rebound, but his buddy Reynolds is there to pick it up anyway. Good job by Reynolds to recognize the point guard responsible for defensive balance had attacked the rim a little bit, so he shades to the half court line and secures the miss. That's one thing you can get on the long three. Sometimes the rebounds are way out near midcourt. This one isn't taken down by Byron Sanders, who's in the lineup. Green now ahead as Roy Williams has gone to his bench. And they throw it away. Pull up three for Reynolds. Count it. So a great start for Singletary and Reynolds and Virginia overall. They lead by eight. And Brad, time, score, and momentum always dictate what is a good shot. All three of those things favor Virginia right now. That's why you like that shot in transition. Beg your pardon. They lead by ten. I was looking at the wrong scoreboard. One of them had... 12-4, the other one had 12-2. Now we do have 12-4. First North Carolina points in about five minutes. Carolina, the number one field goal defensive team in the ACC this year, holding opponents to 41%. Team that can really thrive off of ball pressure. Reynolds with a heat check, didn't go. Rebound comes off to Green. They're a sideline uh, secondary break into a set pattern into motion. And they throw it away again in part of that motion. And now Reynolds. Wow, what a start for, North, for uh, Virginia against the number two seed. I uh, love the pace that Reynolds played the game with last night. Look at him here. He knows there's no need to turn on the Jets. The defender had the same shoulder angle as he did, so he slowed down just a little bit, going full speed, boom, then under control at the end. Kind of a power plus finesse play that time out of Reynolds on the break. Jimmy, half of the Cavaliers' points are on fast breaks right now, and they lead by 10, 14 to 4. And I talked about Virginia controlling the pace of this game, but that's not, Brad, just walking the ball up the floor and being methodical. It's running when you have the numbers, backing it out when you don't. It's getting to the free throw stripe. It's getting on the, on the offensive glass. It's fouling at times on the right time just to keep the game in broken up segments. Right now, their running has been under control and ahead of the pack for the most part. Danny Green averaging about seven and a half points a game. The lead score off the bench for Roy Williams in North Carolina, and he got both free throws. Cuts the lead to eight. Rayshon Terry checks back in for the Tar Heels. Hansbro back in as well. Now Quentin Thomas playing the point. Bannister, who had a nice game off the bench. Part of the three-guard offense right now. Great feed inside. Kane missed in close. And Hansbro, look out for the elbows. Is fouled. If you're Virginia, you know you're not going to get a lot of easy ones around that rim in this ball game, and you've got to convert. Kane goes up, gets challenged just a little bit, a little bit of contact on his hips, but that should not have bothered his release. And there you see Hansbro again, a rugged, rugged rebounder for a freshman. He was fouled by Kane, and Kane sits down with two personals. Mikulakis uh, comes back in now. Ginyard kicks outside. Noel's got an open three. Whoa, nice rebound. But Deanna gave it up, and Hansbro made sure. I said he's got the strongest hands in the ACC, and there's a good example of it right there. You have that ball loose away from your body, and Hansbro's in the neighborhood. He could get a swipe. 
Carolina trying to pick up the defensive pressure right now. Reynolds is going to shoot over it. In and out, Thomas the rebound. And kickball, it'll be North Carolina's possession. Hansborough is not a stiff on either end of the floor. And there's a secure the rebound. There's a boom. You see the quick hands come in. Quick hands, strong hands. Has a great set of paws on him for a youngster. Thomas works it around the perimeter. Now they pack it down low to Noel. Thomas gives up the three and works for that shot. And it's off the front of the rim. Bannister, nice feed inside. Again, the Cavaliers miss in close. Rayshon Terry is fouled as he goes to the rim by Bannister. Oh, and that's going to count. I thought that foul was about 12 feet away from the bucket. One, did you see how quickly North Carolina advanced that ball? The reach in could have been a late call there, but again, North Carolina, that ball hits the timeline at half court, Brad, with about 33 seconds still on the 35 possession clock. Again, they thrive on running it right up your backside. Fans for Virginia didn't like the call of the foul that seemed to be away from the shot, but the continuation for Terry gives him a three-point play. So North Carolina battles right back into within three. They're on a 7-0 run of their own right now. Just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Because Carolina's defense is, is ballpoint pressure oriented on the catch for Virginia. If they don't catch and own their spot and face up, like a single tear right there, he never faced up and they almost chewed him up because of it. Carolina trying to trap on the guards outside. Mikulowski is trying to find some room to work inside and can, and Noel snatches down the rebound. Tar Heels can make it a one point game. If Hansbrook can score inside, and he does. Has outstanding footwork, doesn't he? Yes. Seldom does the big guy travel, even in traffic. He understands the use of a jump stop and a step through, and he doesn't play a speed that he does not want to play. Very unusual for a kid his uh, age. Nine straight in the last two minutes and change for North Carolina. Whistle foul inside. And we've got a timeout with 11.09. Tyler Hansbro working inside, getting Carolina back to within one. Back in Greensboro, Virginia has led pretty much throughout. They've got a one-point lead with 11.09 remaining in the first half. All season long, we've taken a look at special moments in all the Division I college basketball history as we take a look tonight at UMKC on USBN, ESPN News Pride of the Program. A look at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. The first fighting kangaroo to be invited to take the big leap to the NBA was Tony Dumas. Drafted in the first round by Dallas in 1994, he finished his career at UMKC. KC with a school record 753 points his senior year. You can get more pride of the program on mobile ESPN. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dykes, Doris Burke, Greensboro Coliseum sold out for quarterfinal Friday night. And the Tar Heels of North Carolina, the 10th ranked team in the country, the number two seed in this event, had a 2-0 lead early. And they've been headed by Virginia ever since. But Hansborough, that last move has cut the lead down to one. And Brad, what is at stake for North Carolina in this ball game? If the NCAA tournament started tonight, I think they would project out as about a number three seed. If they go to the championship game and win it, I think Roy Williams' club climbs all the way to a two seed. What a job he has done, huh? National Coach of the Year, in my opinion, hands down. Last year wins the championship with the veterans that all went on, the top seven scores all gone, 91% of the points, 87% of the rebounds, and all of a sudden it's a bunch of new guys, and they're 21 and six. Shocking pretty much everybody, not only in the conference, but in the country with what they've done. I like Virginia running their offense right now. They've uh, shortened that rhythm in the game on this possession. Now they got to try to find a good shot in the next five seconds. Bannister might get a good shot. He got a great look and got wide open. It rattled out on it. When we're seeing why Virginia is 12th in this league in field goal percentage. Quentin Thomas is fouled on his way to the rack. And he'll go to the free throw line. 
Championship week presented by 7-Up continues tonight at 9 on ESPN. Semifinal action, the Big East presented by Aeropostale. Number 16, Pitt taking on number 2, Villanova. Games available in high definition on ESPN HD. Bannister with his second foul and sending Quentin Thomas to the free throw line. I still think UConn's locked into the number one seed. Villanova will not be dislodged there. Then it comes down to uh, Duke, Memphis, and in my opinion, Ohio State. Those are the three that will be fighting it out for those final two spots. Carolina started ice cold. They've warmed up from the field and now from the free throw line. Quentin Thomas knocks them both down and Carolina regains the lead by one. 11 straight points now for the Tar Heels. Singletary at 5'10", and he does a great job when he wants to go somewhere. He shrinks to about 5'6". Lowest shoulders win on the drive. Billy Campbell in the lineup now for Virginia as well. Air mailed from the baseline. <laughs> I know what Adrian Joseph's going to say. I got it right to you where I wanted to for the assist. Miller for three. They advance that ball to the timeline at the 35 second mark on the possession clock. Tell you what's going to blow you away. Singletary has nine rebounds. We wow. still have nine rebounds, nine for, rebounds Singletary. for Singletary. Smallest guy on the floor. Joseph feeds Nikolaskis trying to find the handle. Three tower heels around him. He missed from a foot away. That's at least four misses from a foot away. Terry got his man up, not drives the baseline with a left hand. Sweet looking move by Ray Sean Terry. There it is again, attacking after one pass. You better get back and you better lock in. Sixteen to two, North Carolina on a tear to take a four point lead. And a whistle and a foul. Blocking foul on Virginia on Nicolasis. Rayshon Terry, boy, he sold the ball fake, didn't he? His eyes went to the rim when he lifted the ball. That got the defender to leave his feet. And how important is Rayshon Terry? 18 and 4 when he gets in double figures. You know, last year he averaged 2.3 points a game. Now he's at 14.2. Best in the conference as far as turnaround and improvement. And, you know, we talk a lot about the freshmen, and they are very talented for North Carolina. You don't have Rayshon Terry and David Noel. They're not 21 and 6. I don't care what anybody says. That's exactly what Roy Williams said today. Andro is muscles one off the glass. He's strong. And has the ability to put on probably about another 15 pounds. He told me before the ball game he weighs about 234 right now. But he could hover around that 250 mark with ease. Reynolds going to try to break the string here for Virginia and try to get some offense back in their game. Penetrates as he did so well last night, but he can't finish. Battle for the rebound. And out of bounds to North Carolina. Let's check in with Doris. Guys, that last play by Tyler Hansbro typifies his approach. Oliver Purnell talked about the fact that maybe skill-wise he's not spectacular in any one area. What he is spectacular on is his approach. You'd be hard-pressed to find a guy who plays harder for the full 40, gentlemen. Yep. I, you know, at times he looks very awkward, but the ball goes in, so who cares? Kind of a bull in the china closet, yeah, exactly. isn't he, when he gets that surround sound defense around him? Here's Green from long range. And the rebound carries way out to Adrian Joseph. And timeout. Uh, oh, like a technical a on Dave Lado. I thought it was a timeout being called, and now Dave's out on the court. And Brian Kersey just teed him up. Technical with 8.14 to go in the first half. Well, he was not giving away anything in the locker room prior to this ball game to me in conversation. He had that look of a warrior getting ready to lead his troops into an uphill battle, and that's the sign of it right there. And Wes Miller goes to the free throw line and knocks down the first. And the second. Doris? Well, you get a glimpse of Dave Lato, guys. Grew up in New Bedford, Mass. Sort of a hard-working, no-frills, hard-scrabble town. He's a Cape Verdean guy trying to instill discipline and toughness into this Virginia team. This is a process, but you could tell the way these young men play that they are starting to take on his persona. And, of course, 14 years under Jim Calhoun as an assistant. 
at UConn, played for Jim at Northeastern. A couple of years he's the head coach there, and then three very successful years at DePaul before arriving in Charlottesville. And this is his first season and his uh, first year as a head coach in the ACC tournament. He wants his Virginia team to be described as you described Duke, Michigan State, and Marquette. If nothing else, they are going to bring the effort for 40 minutes. Those are the three best, in my opinion, on a night-to-night -night basis. Or under the eight-minute mark, as Virginia has seen their lead evaporate. And now it's Carolina by eight. Reynolds' baseline got around Noel and was fouled en route by David. That'll be the first down, Noel. And we've got a timeout. North Carolina on quite a tear, 20 to two run. And shooting 70% since their early problems. They lead. Had that magic for one more night, but Roy Hibbert, the big seven footer plus with other ideas. And right now, Georgetown up by eight over on ESPN. Big 12, Oklahoma State needing some postseason magic to reach the dance. Kansas standing in their way. Julian Wright down low. And the Jayhawks are up by nine. Brett. All right, Scott, thanks. You talk about number one seeds that have fallen. Syracuse beating UConn, of course. GW lost to Temple, so you know somebody else is getting in from the 8-10. And Tennessee losing to South Carolina today. All the hoopla about Tennessee and Dave Odom's Gamecocks got them today. That's a big upset in the SEC. Boy, if you're sitting there on uh, top of a bubble like Maryland is, who we'll see in the nightcap, you have an eye right now on South Carolina in the SEC and Oregon in the Pac-10. You cannot afford for those two teams to win their tournament. That'll mess everything up, wouldn't it? Singletary, nice drive by Sean, and he'll get a chance to add one. Virginia had the early lead, Doris, and I don't know what uh, was going on over there, but I know you were near their huddle on that last time out. Yeah, Dave Leto really got after his team. He said, gentlemen, we are going to start attacking the basket. Carolina with nine fast break points. He said, they're exposing us. We're the ones who step slow. He said, I don't care what happens tonight, but guys, leave it all on the line out there. You saw the attacking of Singletary, and it pays off. Sean gets a three-point play, cuts... The deficit to five. If Virginia just gets a little bit of help from their front line, right now they're uh, four points on two for 12. They can hang in this ball game because the guards are here tonight. They've missed so many shots yeah. within two feet of the rim. And now turnover. Singletary really playing a lot better than he did last night. And oh, that beautiful. moves it right there. Knocks down a three. Boy, has he been huge. With seven minutes and change remaining, he's made it a two-point game again. 13 points and nine rebounds for basically the smallest guy on the court. Boy, and how under control was he, huh, on the initial push? Just read the numbers, and numbers dictated a pull-up jump shot. He stuck it. Now, Dave Leto up and encouraging his team defensively, as Doris was talking about. Here's Danny Green on the outside. Side rebound comes off to Reynolds. JR runs through everybody and around everybody. And he's fouled. He's got another gear when the ball's in his hand. Well, the last time down, I talked about Singletary and uh, how he understands speed of the game and read defenders. Watch as he advances this basketball. Pull it right there. Look how deep this defender gets buried from behind that three-point line. That's telling Singletary, I got a chance to stick one on you. Terrific job by Singletary reading the feet of the defender that was on him. That dictated the shot selection for him. We mentioned the two veteran guards. How would North Carolina handle it? Right now, they're not handling 44 very well. 13 points. The rest of the team has nine, and six of those comes from the guy that's at the free throw line, his backcourt mate, J.R. Reynolds, who in the last 22 games is averaging 18 and a half per ball game. Singletary, the first all-ACC first-team guy from Virginia since Bryant Stiff back in 1992. Boy, Bryant, that's a drought. Bryant was a good one, too, and what a great offensive rebounder he was. Singletary and Reynolds have gotten Virginia right back in the game with eight points between them in the last 52 seconds. In a tie game at 24. Hansbro hooks the pass down low to Sanders, who lost the handle. And out of bounds to North Carolina. Even though Billy Campbell is pleading, Brian Kersey says going the other way. Virginia's pretty small right now across that front line. With three guards in the game, it's very difficult now for Virginia to double-team Hansborough on the touch and do it effectively. Now the officials are going over to see whether or not, I think the discussion is going to be whether the change of possession will change the shot clock or if it's going to go back to the way it was. They had 35 up there. They put 19 up now. I think that's the way we're going to play it. 
with 623 remaining in this quarterfinal game one of two you'll see tonight from Greensboro Maryland and Boston College in the nightcap nice entry pass to Hansbro muscles it up chance for a three-point play I find myself using that term because I don't know any other way to put it. It's not graceful looking. Yep. He just powers through everybody's hands and he finds a way to get it off the glass. And Brad, watch him search out the contact. Right there, just leans into it, knows I'm gonna get a bump. But again, he's a through your chin to the rim type guy. And he gets to that free throw line as well as anybody around. Second in the ACC in scoring at 19 a game as a freshman. Pretty impressive. Missed the free throw, though. His 165 made free throws on the year is a freshman record at his school. There's been some talent go through those doors, hasn't there? Well, the only Tar Heel ever to lead the team in scoring and rebounding in his freshman season. You think of some of the names when you look at those jerseys that are hanging in the Smith Center, and you go, wow, that's pretty good. Virginia with three guards using their bigs to step out on the floor and let the guards work off the screen. Just spread in space right now out of Virginia. Five on the shot clock. Joseph has to give it up and he throws it away. Back come the heels, leading by two. Hansbrough's asking for it. Quentin Thomas didn't get it to him. This time he does on the bounce pass to the block. And here's a triple team. He had it ripped out of there and Virginia comes up with the ball. That was like a swarm of bees around number 50 right there. Yeah, he's uh, he's got to read the defense better. The two team came on him. He didn't immediately back it out with a dribble or reverse the basketball off of a pass. And he finally got chewed up. Reynolds got an open 15 footer and it rimmed out on it. And Andrew goes down hard. There's going to be a foul on one of the two Virginia players there as the foul. Gonna be called on Soroye. Let's check in with Doris. Well, Tyler Hansbro, everybody talks about how tough he is. He doesn't have to look far for an example, guys. In the pregame, this is his typical routine. Works out with a medicine ball, a little added weight. I imagine that regular ball feels <laughs> a little bit lighter, gentlemen, after working with that. Yeah. That's what helps him have what I think are the strongest hands in this league. He spends time every day with that medicine ball. He's been to the uh, free throw strike more than anyone in this league. A little over eight times a ball game. 44 single theory and 34 Noel. David Noel comes back in for North Carolina. Sean Singletary returns for Virginia. Here's what I was talking about with all the great players to be the first to accomplish that feat is pretty impressive. David Noel keeps it alive. Quentin Thomas on a runner on the baseline and Billy Campbell with a rebound. Thomas really dribbled himself into a very difficult shot. That eight-footer from the side of the rim, one of the tougher shots in the game. So we're under the five-minute mark. Carolina with a three-point lead. Virginia led by as many as 10 early. And then Carolina went on a 20-2 run to take a big advantage of their own. Seesaw back and forth now in the last few possessions. Noel off the Singletary miss with a board. Miller immediately feeds hands roll the post and an offensive foul this time. Would appreciate the effort of Virginia's bigs to run the floor and be there in that take a charge spot. His hands broke and run and they advance the ball that time to the deep corner with 32 seconds on the 35 shot clock. That time hands broke looked like a car where you put it in reverse and you find out you don't have any brakes. He just <laughs> ran over a couple of Cavaliers and picks up his first foul. This kid is all about effort though. He had 40 points against uh, Georgia Tech, but he missed five free throws in that ball game. The next day, Roy Williams gave his kids the day off and he saw Tyler Hansbro in the gym by himself shooting free throw. That's impressive. That's the mark of a future star is what that is. See if the Cavaliers can find some offense. And a little stagnant for him. The last couple of trips down court. And now Reynolds hits the deck. And Rayshon Terry picks him up. He's going to be one of the guys that was there, but they actually the foul's on Wes Miller. Second on Miller. Brad, I know North Carolina has a three-point lead, but think about it. North Carolina averages 80 points a ball game. Virginia averages 66. Perfect for the Cavaliers Exactly, right man. The flow, the tempo, the speed, the pace. Dave Lato's kids have done a nice job of it. This guy had good games against Carolina both Alex 16 points in the first game 19 the second go around and right now 
He's got eight in the first half. He and Singletary have been the spark plugs. They average about 34 and a half points a game between them, and they're on that kind of pace tonight. Remember, they had to play hard just to get here to beat Virginia Tech last night. Second one off the mark, and the rebound still loose. Picked up by Carolina. Virginia goes zone. 2-3 zone. They played it about half the time last night. Wow, Rayshon Terry way out there for three. And it's a small zone up top. So Terry at 6-7, although the defender was there, boom, nothing but the bottom. Rayshon's 40th three-pointer of the year. That maybe was from about 25 feet away. Bannister behind the back, kick out. Singletary thought about a three of his own. Kane with a jumper off the mark. Rebound kept alive, though, by Soroye. Way outside is Reynolds, and he got it. Well, it's kind of like he looked at Rayshon Terry and said, yep, you were way out there, but I think I got a good look myself. 30-28, Carolina. Brad, look how small that zone is up top of Virginia. Both guards are little little titans. They're both about 5'9 or 5'10. You can get shots over them. And Wes Miller is a guy that can shoot it from out there. That is his 56th three-pointer of the year, his second of the night. He's got eight points, and he pushes out the lead back to five with three to play in the first half. Virginia can't let this thing slip away from them now in the last three minutes. Carolina's a club that can score 10 points. Boom, boom, boom in a hurry on you. Right now, Reynolds and Singletary have 24 of the Cavaliers' 28 points. Wow. Make it 26 of 30. How about that little teardrop to fall? Noel has it rejected, but he's fouled. And again, to not run from offense to defense cost the Virginia Cavaliers. You cannot celebrate no matter how good of a shot it was by Singletary. You cannot celebrate against Carolina. Dave Lato's team only down three to Roy Williams Club. Another Williams getting off the bus. Roy. Time report all your scores and highlights from championship week. We had another top seed fall, a big upset in the ACC. And here, uh, what a difference a week makes. Huh? Yeah, I mean, North Carolina blows out Virginia. And now all of a sudden they're in a tight ball game. That's, that's really what we've seen today. The sterile environment. Teams are having trouble, especially young teams like Carolina, adjusting to that environment. We will break it all down at the half. For now, we'll send you back to Greensboro, guys. All right, fellas, we'll see you at halftime. And we talked about earlier how would North Carolina handle the guards of Virginia, who have experience and are all ACC-type players. Try 26 of their 30 points are from Singletary and Reynolds right now as Noel goes to the free throw line. Look at those numbers. 24 of 28 games. One of those two guys has been the man tonight there, Batman and Robin. Boy, they've been under control, too, haven't they, yeah. to get those 26? They have not forced shots, but they have actively been the guys seeking the shots. There's a big difference. Noel missed the second. Bannister ahead to Reynolds. Again, it's Singletary. Reynolds and Bannister in the three-guard set here for Virginia. And with Bannister out at the point, it gives Singletary and Reynolds room to run. Right now, Reynolds trying to go around picks on the baseline to get an opening, and Danny Green won't give him one. The guards are controlling the tempo of this game, though. Awfully well with that basketball. Can they get some help nice. inside from the big guy? Lars Mikulaskis with four points. As I mentioned, he had 11 last night and a season-high 12. Rebounds. Two minute mark. North Carolina leads by two. Virginia's back to their two small guards up top in a 2 3 zone. Carolina can get a look off anytime they want from that free throw line extended and higher. Green found a little opening and slithered through it. Danny Green with four for the Tar Heels. He's an important score off that bench in these seven points a game. Mm -hmm. Good defender as well, Green. Bannister, he's quick. He, he put it in reverse there and almost left Frazier in the dust. But Joseph missed the outside jumper, and back come the Tar Heels. Long three. Wow, it can't get much deeper. That is the third for Wes Miller. I mean, I know it was deep, but again, the two guys up top in Virginia's zone are both 5'10". That's another reason why that shot was released. Eleven points for Wes Miller in the Tar Heels' first half. 
Nikoloskis gives the Cavaliers a second shot clock. There's about a 15 second difference shot clock and game clock as we wind down the first half of our first game tonight from Greensboro. Been a good one. What Virginia doesn't want is a turnover or a miss in North Carolina to hit a momentum basket going into the locker room. You got that right. They got a nice looking three and now they keep it alive and they can play for the last shot. Down by seven and trying to cut into that lead before halftime. And Brad, in this situation, you take the last shot of the half if you're Virginia. Don't give North Carolina a chance to get a long rebound and throw one in on you. Take Sing the very last shot. Singletary looks like he's going to be the man. Nope, he threw the ball up and, and they almost did turn it over. And Singletary went down hard on that hip that Doris talked about and he's in pain. He hit the deck hard right in front of us. You could hear the thud where we're sitting. Point one second remaining in the first half. We'll take another look at all of this. Frazier, the collision, oh. right on that sore hip. And everybody hit the deck. And right now, Sean Singletary would like to dump, like would like to jump in a bucket of ice probably at halftime. Pretty good shot absorbed on that hip. And that's three fouls on Frazier too, Jimmy. So obviously he's done for the half, but he may not be able to play early in the second half. Carolina did a great job of running and jumping Singletary as that shot clock and game clock was ticking down. Almost forced the turnover. See if Singletary, the number four free throw shooter in the conference, can shake off the pain in his backside and try to get his 16th and 17th points of the of first half. Got number 16. You know, and, and they've played well enough the first 20 minutes, Brad, to only be four or five points down. That's why this second free throw is crucial. And he got them both. Carolina can only hope for a tip in. They just throw it in, and the shot would not have counted anyway. 39 to 34, North Carolina at halftime but Virginia had a lead of its own let it slip away on a big run by the heels as they started cold and worked their way to 13 of their last 18 and they've got the halftime lead by five so the number two seed in the news story both the AP and ABC News reporting earlier today that the FBI and Homeland Security have distributed an intelligence bulletin to law enforcement agencies nationwide describing a recent internet posting on an extreme message board that threatens a terror attack aimed at college basketball arenas or other sports stadiums. The FBI did say that there was no specific threat. In fact, Special Agent Richard Polko said we have absolutely no credible intelligence or threats pertaining to this issue. Now, Greg Shaheen, an NCAA vice president who oversees Division I men's basketball tournament, told ESPN.com earlier today that he has been asked by the FBI to revisit security plans and assure appropriate contingencies have been made. He said that the NCAA takes this matter seriously. These procedures that you're seeing done right here on videotape are normal security procedures that occurred earlier today. We will keep you apprised of any more information as we get it. Brad? All right, Doris, thank you very much for that update, and we will keep you posted. There are 23,745 fans in this particular facility, if you're wondering. The Greensboro Coliseum, home to the 53rd ACC tournament. We'll take our mind off news for a minute here and try to get back into this quarterfinal Friday night. First game of two. The nightcap tonight is Maryland and Boston College. Doris, along with Jimmy Dykes, I'm Brad Nessler. It's 39-34, Carolina with the lead as we start the second half. Can Virginia find another score to go with the two guards? Singletary and Reynolds in this ball game. Well, it was a streaky first half of first half of runs after the 2-0 North Carolina lead. It was Virginia that ripped off 12 in a row. Then Carolina came back with a long one of their own, 22 straight. Virginia answered 8-0. And you can see it was up and down a seesaw battle. We had three ties in the first half. And a very well played first half. Only four turnovers suffered by Virginia. Their backcourt, 28 points between Singletary and Reynolds. That's been their big offense. 28 points and 12 rebounds, I might add. How good was the first half of Singletary? 17 points, nine rebounds, yeah. the leading rebounder, and no turnovers. Pretty sweet. Here's Hansbro in the lane, triple teamed. Rebound will come off 
to Jason Kane. Kane had two early fouls and didn't get to see a lot of action in the first half. Singletary spins. Doesn't get it to drop. It was a great move. He just didn't quite finish, and the ball will be out of bounds to North Carolina. When Singletary and Reynolds, time and time again in this ballgame, Brad, have taken the basketball anywhere they want to go, anytime they want to go there. North Carolina not doing a great job of containing those guys off the bounce. You know, if Virginia had had a better half shooting, they only shot 31%. They missed so many little snowbirds from about a foot away inside between Mikuloskis and Kane and those guys. They'd probably be in the lead. Sure. Again, Virginia averages 66 points. They don't have it in their arsenal to win a game if it gets to the 80s. They better slow it down. Boy, did Rayshon Terry get some nice position on Adrian Joseph. And he's got 10. Carolina by seven. Their biggest lead was eight, 24 to 16. Double team on Nikolaskis and a jump ball. Quentin Thomas does a nice job to get his hands in there without a foul, and that's going to turn it back over to North Carolina. Rayshon Terry, an important guy. Again, he's averaging uh, double figures in their 18 wins, and he's a guy that can score from all spots of the floor. He's a tough guy because of his size at 6'7", 6'8". They try to go right back to the same spot to him. This one's knocked out of bounds by Joseph. Rayshon got that nice body lean in there, and if he gets it down in that low block, if he's even, he's leaving, and he was on that last play. They tried to lob it into him and threw it away. And Virginia gives it right back. Boy, you got to know who you're throwing to. Kane does not have the speed to catch up to a long one. Terry again, reverse layup, foul on the baseline in route. Singletary gets his first foul. Talked about how hard uh, Marquette, Michigan State, and Duke play. I think North Carolina is right there, maybe just a notch below on that consistent effort every night. They are awfully quick reacting to those 50-50 balls. What a cut. Quentin Thomas, great pass. That one had eyes and had some zip on it to Noel. Quentin Thomas, who made the play on the other end on the overthrow, intended for Kane and just backhanded to Noel. And then he comes down on the other end and gets a sweet dish inside. And now it's Carolina with its biggest lead of the night. You know, the last 11 ball games, Quentin Thomas has had four assists and one turnover. Boy, those are great numbers for a backup off the bench. Reynolds missed a three. Thomas coming down in a hurry. Miller's wide open. He's three for three from three-point land tonight. He might get another chance. They go inside instead to Hansborough, and he's fouled. And it's going to be on Kane. And so quickly he gets his third. And that's probably going to bring Deani off the bench and Kane sitting. Well, Deani's coming in, but it's Jason Kane that's going out. The inbound will come from Quentin Thomas. No help. The bounce pass down to the low block to Hansbro. Virginia doing a nice job double teaming Hansbro when he gets his hands on the ball. And out of control a little bit on the drive. Quentin Thomas gets the offensive foul. Well, last possession, uh, Carolina does a great job with a back screen and then a slice cut off of it. You're going to see the back screen set right here, and then the slice cut off of it. Boom. Just kind of a brush screen, and all you have to do as a screener sometimes, Brad, is just make the defender move off of his natural path and his natural route, and it still works. That's a great job of a back screen and a slice cut right to the rim. And it was a perfect pass, and Noel's got the hands to handle it down there. And it's a 43-34, nine-point Carolina lead with 17 to play in this quarterfinal game. Nikoloskis with the hook shot on the baseline. Again, playing with that mask because of the broken nose he suffered. I think it's making his game suffer a little bit. Blocking foul before the shot. And now King is going to have four fouls. Oh, and there's North Carolina again. Once they secure that basketball, it is a foot race for all five guys in Carolina blue and white to the other end. Well, Kane in the first matchup between these two teams this year had a pretty good game. Seven points, five rebounds, and a season-high five block shots. Tonight, mostly it's personal fouls that he's racking up, and he's got to sit down with four. He's only played seven minutes. Throw into the backcourt. Ginyard goes and shags that down. Talked about this league last night. Not a lot of plays, but it's just guys making plays. And there's Terry with a great example of it. Trust in your talent that you put on the floor. Coaches in this league probably do it as well as any league in the country. 
Mamadi Diani comes up with a foul, his second. Rayshon Terry will go to the free throw line. You know, Brad, the other thing that stands out to me and what Roy Williams has done this year, last year he got a bunch of guys that he had to always keep the pressure on them. I mean, he couldn't turn his uh, attention away from them for a second. This year, as young as they've been, he has done a great job of keeping the pressure off of his kids. Well, that's the sign of a coach that, you know, the, the good coaches can identify a problem. The great coaches can fix a problem. He's a great one. Good ball club that nobody seems to be talking about. The Hawkeyes looking to cruise into the Big Ten semifinals. Eric Hansen down low for two. Brad, back to you. We'll keep you posted. All right, Scott, thanks. Here it's North Carolina now by 11. As they continue to stretch their lead, and Jimmy Virginia's in a little bit of a danger zone right now because you go back to the first half, five and a half minutes without a field goal, and they need some offense right now. We'll look at North Carolina after timeout. They will change their defense up and a lot of times try to trap when that ball goes to the sidelines. There's usual source. Diani, although he has had 14 threes on the year, you don't expect him to be the guy taking one outside the arc. And a nice steal by Adrian Joseph. So Virginia's gotten a bucket, they've gotten a stop, and now another bucket, and they stay right in this ball game. Reynolds really wants it. Gives it back up, though. And there's the second three in a row by Mamadi Diani. Not afraid to shoot. He averages one shot every three minutes that he's on the floor. He comes with a purpose. You know, in the big-time loss, the 45-point loss to North Carolina, he had 21 points in that game. That was about the biggest resource they had. And now looking for a rebound and a push is going to be on Byron Sanders. That'll be his second. And Brad, uh, uh, Virginia can't win this ball game, and you cannot win a national championship if you just have two scores. Dave Lato knows he needs a third guy to step up to go with his guards. Nick Canner Medley, who's had a great year for the Maryland Terrapins, stretching out those hamstrings because the Terps in Boston College. In-game update, Big 12 Conference wow. Tournament, Kansas. You know the Jayhawks rebound. They are crashing the boards against Oklahoma State. Sasha Kong with a tip in. He's got nine points. Jayhawks by six over on ESPNU. And don't look now, but here comes Syracuse back within six against Georgetown over on ESPN. Guys. McNamara's band has been playing loudly for three days. See if he can bring them back one more time. Here in the ACC quarterfinals, the number two seed, the 10th ranked team in the country in white, the North Carolina Tar Heels have their hands full with the Cavaliers of Virginia who had to play last night just to get here. They won by four over Virginia Tech. They trailed in this game by as many as 11, but they're back to within five. Talking about North Carolina projecting out as a three seed right now. I think Duke out of this conference would be a number one seed if the tournament started tonight. NC State would be about a six, but they're dropping quickly on the seed department. Yeah. Boston College you will see coming up right in that four five range. Quentin Thomas was seven on the shot clock. Had a great look wide open. Didn't get it. Noel had it stripped by Singletary. Boy, nice rebound by David Noel, and then Singletary just swipes it out of there. Let's check in with Doris. Well, guys, the 1-3-1 one, one trap that North Carolina went to, Dave Lato just told us, guys, this is an attempt to speed up the basketball game. What I want you to do is get ball reversal, attack a gap, make the extra pass. You're going to get uncontested jump shots, and that usually leads to a bucket, Jimmy Dykes. <laughs> yeah, it's something you have to expect against Carolina. Coming out of a timeout, Roy Williams will change that defense up. Dave Lato, a great job of scouting, talked about in the timeout, and made him pay. Deani, Singletary, Reynolds all out there, all good shooters. Deani's hit the last two threes. He might do a heat check here pretty soon, but he is going to have a turnover instead. The foul was on Adrian Joseph, and that'll be his third. Championship week presented by 7-Up. This is Virginia, North Carolina. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dykes, Doris Burke with you, along with our ESPN2 crew. Earlier today,
Duke had its hands full, but survived the Miami Hurricanes, who played very well. And Wake Forest has been a Cinderella story so far, winning two games, including a big win today. So they get a piece of Duke tomorrow. David Noel on the putback with a one-hand slam. Boy, Noel has been a terrific teammate this year, a great team guy. Like all seniors at an elite program, they have dreams of going to the pros, but he has played the game this year for Roy Williams as a terrific teammate. Yeah, he missed that one. Quentin Thomas, the rebound. Noel's the only guy that even scored in the championship win over Illinois last year. That's how much they lost off this North Carolina roster. Virginia trying to run the other way. Singletary pull up from 18. He got fouled. And I think it's just inside the three-point line, so he's going to go to the free-throw line for two. Quentin Thomas was there, but the foul's going to be on Noel. Talking about David Noel, uh, a guy that's been just a terrific teammate. Has not really been a guy that's hunted his shot throughout the years. Has been a terrific defender. Flies around that rim. He's actually a better football player come out of high school than he was basketball. But Roy Williams spent a lot of time this morning talking about his senior and how he bought in to being a team guy this year, not worried about my future. That is not easy message to get across to seniors. And in, in the process has become a very, very good player. Doris? Well, in fact, guys, he reached out to former teammates Ray Felton, Sean May, Anton Jameson. History has a way of working and repeating itself. David Noel wanted to know from those guys, how do I become the best leader possible? Remember, this is a guy who passed on football scholarships to walk on as a freshman to Carolina. He was scholarship later, but he has been the old a team guy you're right on Jimmy 6 6 senior out of Durham and of course he had a great night at home not his home floor but last Saturday night with the win at Cameron Indoor nice drive inside by Jason Terry uh, Rayshon Terry he's fouled and that is going to be Adrian Joseph's fourth so Dave Lato's inside guys have a whole bunch of foul trouble right now Kane is on the bench with four. Adrian Joseph now has four. Brad, another reason why Roy Williams is deserving of National Coach of the Year. His top seven guys, and he was uh, pretty pleased to talk about them this morning with me. His top seven guys are four freshmen, two former walk-ons with uh, a guy like Noel, and then Rashawn Terry, who was a second-team All-Stater. Now, that's not the signs of a team that should be ranked 10th in the nation, that's right, but that's the job that Roy Williams and his staff have done this year. And, of course, you're trying to replace guys like, and Doris started the list, Sean May, Rashad McCants, Raymond Felton, Marvin Williams, Jawad Williams, Melvin Scott, Jackie Manuel. I don't have to go any farther, I don't think. That's a pretty good team right there. He said out of 80, they had their 86th practice of the year coming into this tournament. And he said, only twice have I walked out of a practice this year in the Dean Dome frustrated with my kids. Now, he didn't have that same ratio last year, I can promise you. There's the foul trouble that the Cavaliers have right now, and they're trailing by seven with 13 minutes to play. Singletary putting on a dribbling show, but Miller's staying right with him. All Virginia's trying to do is be within reach at the last media timeout. They're not going to blow Carolina out. They want to be within reach at that four-minute mark. That's the goal. On the drive, whistle, and a foul before the shot. It's going to be on North Carolina. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues tonight at 9 on ESPN. Semifinal action in the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale. It's Pittsburgh and Villanova. That game available in high definition on ESPN HD. The foul was on West Miller, his third. Fresh shot clock for Virginia, and off the inbound, Singletary tried a three and missed it. And Thomas will bring it for the heels. Nice entry pass to Hansbro. Might have gotten away with a walk. He missed the shot. And on the rebound, there's a foul. You're right about Hansborough, probably got away with a walk, but again, you've got to be impressed with the fact that the big ran the floor and was on that high percentage spot after about four seconds of his team having the basketball. They are as attack-minded as you'll find in the college game. Rayshon Terry's five for five from the stripe. He's back there now. He was a 54% free throw shooter as a freshman. You think he hasn't worked on his game? He's up over 78% right now. And he's just ripping them. Six straight from the stripe, five in this half. 
15 points for Ray Sean. You know, the other thing that has benefited Roy Williams this year, Frazier, Ginyard, Green, all those guys were coached by their dad in high school. So they come from competitive backgrounds. They understand the importance of being a good teammate on the floor and off the floor, and he's reaping the benefits of all those fathers. So now the lead is nine. 51-42. Bannister trying to shake Miller. Gianni has two threes. He hit two threes in a 50-second span when he came off the bench. There, Nicolosis finally gets inside and gets good position. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Boy, he's just a bulldog, isn't he? Because Hansborough gets catch. Look how far out on the floor Hansborough was as a defender trying to front the post. you got to recognize where you are as a defender, and once the offensive guy moves you up the lane, you've got to reposition yourself and get behind. Just a young mistake made by Hansborough. Nikoloskis only a 55% free throw shooter and missed that one as well. Hansbro with a rebound. Seven point ball game with 12 to go. Oh, what an acrobatic move. Oh, he got it. Holy wow. Cow. Hello, Sports Center. Rayshon Terry. How long did he hang in the air? He looked like a guy that used to have a three on his jersey and a two in front of it there for a second. That was unreal what he did with that basketball. Are you kidding me? You forget about the fact that he's 6'8". Explode, hang. Oh. <laughs> Can't get any better than that, uh -uh. Brad. Uh-uh. I like it. Carolina fans like it. They lead 53-44. Up for this winning thing. Down big early against Georgetown, but here come the Orange. Jerry McNamara sets up Matt Gorman for three. Hoyas by three over on ESPN. Elsewhere, St. Joe's knocks off Temple, which means the top four seeds in the 8 10 tournament are all out, and Iowa finishes off Minnesota 67 57. Brett? All right, Scott, here it's North Carolina 53 to 44 by nine, as TJ Bannister is going to go to the free throw line, has not scored. Yet tonight. That's right. Syracuse has played their way into the uh, NCAA tournament the last 48 hours, and a club like Florida State in this league has played their way out. It happens every year. Yep. And in the nightcap tonight, Boston College and Maryland. Maryland is sitting right there. If they could win, I would think they'd be in. If they don't, I don't think they will be, but we'll have to wait and see. Right now, they're not listed in some of the experts' opinions as being a team that would be in the NCAA tournament. So that's what our nightcap on quarterfinal Friday from Greensboro means tonight. And I know this, I've seen Southern Illinois this year that won the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. I've seen Missouri State that has the best RPI of that league. Maryland, I know, would finish at least second in that league. That's what you're up against in this ACC. Andrew almost lost it. Shot clock down to seven. A little bit of Alec control ball right now as Ginyard turns it over. For North Carolina. Rayshon Terry, if you missed it before the timeout, watch this move on the baseline up and around Nikoloskis and then up off the glass. Great hang time, 18 points. You're not going to see one much better than that tonight. Mm, that's what you recruit. You don't coach right there. You forget the fact that he's 6'8. Great players make great plays. You just said it a little while ago. Here's the bump and the foul on Terry. And J.R. Reynolds trying to get to that basket again, as he did so well last night against Virginia Tech. A lot of his 23 points came by going to the glass. He has not scored in the second half, has an opportunity now. In fact, he and Singletary, who had 28 points and 12 rebounds between them in the first half, do not have a field goal in the second half, neither one of them. And Brad, the, the, the atmosphere, the feeling in this building right now is exactly what Virginia wants. It's quiet. Yep. It's hot. There's no rhythm to this ball game. And they're just hanging around like I like to say lunch breath. They just won't <laughs> go away. But the atmosphere is perfect for them to try to pull this off. Well, they can make it just a five point game if they hit this free throw and JR got it. He's got 13 53 48 with 11 to go. You're right. They're sitting on their hands. Now they're trying to get a little something going across from us. A few people standing up. Virginia back to that small 2-3 zone. They cut, cut right down the middle of it. And it's Rayshon Terry. That one was a lot easier. He's got 20. Having the night of his life almost, especially on the big stage, the ACC tournament. 
What a move by Singletary. He just, uh, Reynolds rather, he just didn't quite finish. Noel packs it inside. Hands throw three guys around him. He gets it out of there. And now they throw it away. Boy, a force, the surround sound defense on Hansborough worked to perfection. One thing Tyler Hansborough has to develop is the attitude to post and repost and repost again within one possession. He doesn't always do it. Carolina back to back turnovers and Virginia gives it right back. Not the time for an alley oop play right there when you're trying to get back to within five. That was a silly move. Point Singletary is really labored out here in front of us. Ginyard instead gets an easy one. You're right. Singletary holding his right leg and they might have to stop play here. He's looking at the official and they are going to stop it right here. Sean Singletary limping over to the Virginia bench. He's going to be the last one to arrive and the first one to sit down. 30 seconds, timeout. Boy, and it could be a long nine minutes and change for Virginia if he doesn't come back on this floor. He'll probably bring Bannister out there again. And obviously, he's in some pain with the trainers there. 19 points and nine rebounds. The nine rebounds all came in the first half, and it's a career high for him. Ultra competitive little guy is what he is. He gets that 2 3 zone. Carolina. Did a good job of getting that ball to the wing and then just a hard gut cut right down the middle of the zone. And there the gut cut's going to occur. Just read where the ball is, gut cut, boom, right there. Well, that was a terrific job of getting to the middle of the floor first and then gut cutting right to the front of the rim. He set that thing up with that little two step to the right in front of the rim, Brad, and just easy two points from there. Sean Singletary playing with a bad hip has just had his. Head buried in his arms over there in pain on the sideline. So Billy Campbell and T.J. Bannister come in to join J. R. Reynolds in the three-man backcourt for Virginia. But obviously, there's a big weapon sitting on the Cavalier bench right now. Here's Reynolds on a runner. Couldn't get it to drop. Danny Green will bring it for North Carolina. Frazier, Noel, Green, Hansbro, and Ginyard on the floor for Roy Williams. Nine minute mark, North Carolina leading 57 48. Maybe took a blow to that right hip again at the end of that play. That's what stung him, I think, a little bit. Checks back in at the dead ball. Well, he's a tough kid. He's back out there. Cross court pass, Hansborough handles it, and then he got mugged by Diani underneath. And now four fouls on Diani, and he's the third Cavalier with that kind of problem. And there's another one at the scores table ready to come in for him. Gonna have to exchange one guy with four fouls for another guy with four, it appears. And Hansborough back to the free throw line. Tyler normally a uh, great free throw shooter tonight has not been but he hits that one that's his first point of the second half. And so there goes Diani out Kane in four for four on the foul exchange. One of seven Carolina greats to be named uh, freshman of the year in this league. And Perkins Michael Jordan J.R. Reed Ed Coda Joseph Forte and Marvin Williams. Nice company. Oh boy. <laughs> Here he is in the low block. Draws three guys and Frazier's open for three. Turned down on him and Kane almost threw it away. Nice hustle by everybody in front of us, but the ball will go out to Virginia. So again, no field goals between J.R. Reynolds and Sean Singletary in the second half, and only one field goal in the last seven minutes. Now they are lucky with those numbers you just said to be only down 10. They came out of the block strong. They led by as many as 10 in the early going of the ball game. And then Carolina on a brilliant run to take the lead. And now Singletary with a three. His first field goal, a big one. 22 for Singletary, and it's a seven-point game again. Boy, the defender chasing Singletary just got picked off. Maybe it may be a little bit of a moving screen, but he got hammered. The 
zone has kept this arena quiet. It's another thing that's been good for Virginia. They're hanging around and hanging around with less than eight minutes to go. Frazier got an open look. Tipped by Green, but he tipped it to Kane. And Virginia can slice the lead further. Reynolds all the way down court on the run. Frazier trying to stay with him. And now Reynolds down on the deck. They are up and gets a pat on the back from the last guy that hit the deck hard. His teammate in the backcourt, Sean Singletary. Cap Week is presented by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Maryland Terrapins, who hammered Georgia Tech last night, get ready for 11th-ranked Boston College, B.C., in their first ACC tournament, the number three seed. That's coming up next following our game, about a 9 35 tip roughly depending on the length of this game but right now with 739 to go in this one North Carolina leading Virginia by seven Well, are just a couple of possessions ago they had to get their shooter a shot and watch the headhunter screen on the left side right here boom I mean he just knocks him off he has a moving screen but he was working off of three screens in a row and if the shooter comes to the third screen and he's still not open a headhunter screen boom Boy, that'll get you a shooter open, and that looks like a that looks like a guy that would be a headhunter screener. <laughs> Terrific job. I love teams that get called for at least one move and screen a ball game. To me, that means you're trying to get your teammates open, and he just did. He looks like a Lars, too, doesn't he? That's what his yeah, teammates call him instead of Lorenas. Here's Cher Reynolds at the free throw line. He's got 14, and he has hit six or seven tonight from the strike. Brad, keep an eye on that time. At the four-minute TV timeout mark, that's all Dave Lato is concerned with. Can he be at that point and still be within reach of this ball game? Because then you've got a shooter's chance, if nothing else, with the two guys you have in the backcourt who have between them 37 points. Sure. North Carolina's leaders, Rayshon Terry with 20. Here he is with ball in hand with Thomas, Noel, Ginyard, and Andrew. What's well, a small zone. Noel for three. Got it. Big shot by David Noel. And because Reynolds is only 6-2, having to play the back line of that zone, that three-point shot was there from the corner. Noel with 10 now. He and Terry have 30 between them, the two upperclassmen, if you will, on this Carolina roster. Singletary thought about a three. Now Reynolds will take it. Rebound, who's gonna get it? North Carolina will shag it down in the corner. Rayshon Terry pops a triple, and Billy Campbell with a rebound. Slow this thing down and keep your eyes on that game clock. You wanna be within four, five, six points at the most at the four minute mark if you're Virginia. Singletary gets the shot away, hits the deck, no foul call. He missed the three-pointer. Was looking for a foul and three free throws and didn't get it. We approach the six-minute mark. North Carolina leading by eight underneath. And this one's going the other way. Offensive foul on Rayshon Terry. Not a smart play by an upperclassman for Roy Williams, who's had a terrific year. But against a zone, once you get by your primary defender, your eyes have to quickly find the second defender. And Lars Mikolaskis is the second defender just standing there waiting on him. It's not so much about what your guy did. Where's the second defender coming from? Terry with three fouls. Wes Miller has four. Bobby Frazier has four. So the backcourt in foul trouble for North Carolina. Six minutes to play in an eight-point game. In a day of, well, there have been a surprises all over the country, including here with Wake Forest. And maybe even a surprise that Miami played so well against Duke. And now, here in the first game of two tonight, Virginia giving North Carolina all the problems that they can handle. 
Well, Virginia guards have been hammered, haven't they? With some hustle plays, just some hip-to-hip -hip action has really stung Singletary. Then Riddles comes down awkward on his knee. This is the heart and soul of this ball club. Those two kids are ultra-competitive because they're undersized. Riddles at 6'2 is a nice size, but Singletary at 5'11. So he must have a big Valentine to play at this level, and he does. Reynolds, who had the big game last night with 23. He had 30 before that in the loss to Maryland in the season finale at U-Haul. And he's been on a tear as of late. He and Singletary not doing quite what they did in the first half, but they're trying to do it right now. Virginia's hit 17 of its 19 free throws. You can make it 18 of 20, and they're within six with under six to go. The back side of that zone is small where Reynolds is playing, number two. Whistle foul before the move. And it's going to be on Mikulaskis. Now, see, Brad, that's one of those fouls, though. What did it do? It stopped the game. It kept the arena quiet. It kept the game out of a rhythm. All the things that Virginia has to do in this game, they've done. Look at the score. Carolina again, they usually right. score 80, and they're not on that track. You mentioned under 69 a game for Virginia, so the pace is what the Cavaliers want. Hansborough has had a very quiet offensive second half. This is the same MO they used against Hansborough, though, in the other two games during the regular season. Virginia just surrounded him with three guys that beat him up all night. He got tired in the second half of both games. I'm not saying he's tired now, but he has missed another free throw, though it did come out to Quentin Thomas. So Carolina's got a fresh clock and another chance. And throw inside. And again, he draws a triple team, and somebody's going to foul out, I think. No, they're going to call this one on J.R. Reynolds. So luckily, that's good for the Cavaliers because I thought they were going to call it on Jason Kane, and he would have been gone. Hey, one thing Hansborough does have a good grasp of for a youngster is when he posts, it's not about how tall you are, it's how wide you get. He does a great job of sitting on the defender's knees that's behind him, locking him up, keeping his body on body so he can always know where that defender is. He's got a lot of things that you really can't teach a young kid for his age. Only shooting 50% from the strike tonight, four out of eight. Got both of those, though. 13 points for Hansborough. We're at five and a half minutes to play. North Carolina with a nine-point lead on Virginia. I think it'll be difficult for Virginia to come back from nine down at the four-minute mark. Anything less than that, they can still pull it off. But it cannot grow from this point on. They might need a big shot to keep everything alive like that one if it goes, and it won't. Mikulaskis has it rejected by Noel underneath. Still Virginia ball. With 5'11 to play, and back comes Adrian Joseph. He's had foul trouble all night. He checks back in, and the lineup gets a little bit bigger. Billy Campbell goes out. Joseph gives him a little more size. Reynolds trying to drive, and Danny Green with a foul. And so that's going to send JR back to the free throw line where he's been near perfect tonight. Virginia is benefiting in this game, Brad, by the officials calling it tight on the perimeter. I think they've called it loose on the interior at times with Mikulaskis and, and Hansborough going at it. They've called it tight on the perimeter. That has also helped Virginia in this game. JR, 17 points, looking for number 18, 90% tonight from the stripe, and he rips another one. Doris? Well, yet another shooter is J.R. Reynolds from Roanoke, Virginia. We've seen J.J. Redick, Curtis Staples, who J.J. Redick earlier this year passed as the uh, NCAA's all-time three-point shooter. Staples and J.R. Reynolds have become very good friends, guys. In fact, that dribble drive, a notable influence from Mr. Staples. He told Reynolds, I don't want you to be defined the way I was. Be a balanced basketball player. Be able to shoot it and go off the bounce. And he has shown that ability tonight. Well, this was a good one for the Cavaliers. And they've got a couple good ones right now in the backcourt. And they're keeping them in this ballgame. Seven-point game, under five to go. This would be a huge stop for Virginia. And then come down and make a bucket. Because then you're right at that four-minute mark. And they're within reach. But they need a stop here. Ginyard's going to take a big shot. Not sure about that one. Kane with a rebound. Okay, there's the stop. Now, can they get a conversion and be in this game with four minutes? Reynolds wanted to take it right to the rack and make sure himself. And now, big pile up. And the ball comes out of there. No foul call. Noel with the ball ahead to Thomas. 
And now Thomas just threw it into no man's land. Costly, costly turnover by Virginia. I mean, they had a shot to cut this thing to five, and Dave Lato knows it. You know, the last time they had something like that going on, they threw that silly alley-oop pass. Yep. And there they had the big turnover when they desperately needed a good look. Well, we're going to be at Jimmy's magical four-minute mark. Five seconds on the shot clock. Hansbro in traffic. Oh, got it. There's a game changer for you right there. A chance to cut it to five. They throw it away. And then North Carolina comes right down and goes to the Hoss. And the Hoss just got his club a very important two-point basket and a chance for a three. We'll check his three-point attempt and coming up. We'll check it. Your new Trio 700, the first to run Windows mobile application, so it's as easy as working on your PC. And because it's from Verizon Wireless, you're on the nation's largest high-speed wireless broadband network. So your office is pretty much everywhere. Pretty nice. Get the Palm Trio 700W smartphone with Windows Mobile, broadband speed, and a $100 rebate. Only from Verizon Wireless. It's the network. On Selection Sunday, who's in? That is going to be the most compelling region. Who's out? That is not fair. Dive into the brackets with Reese, Digger, Jay, and Dickie V. Bracketology, Sunday beginning at 5 on ESPN. The World Baseball Classic. Team versus team. Nation versus nation. Baseball dragon rights are on the line. The World Baseball Classic continues through March 20th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN Deportes. Scott Reese in the studio, and you had to see it to believe it. Syracuse, Georgetown, final seconds. The Hoyas turn it over, up by one. Back the other way, Jerry McNamara. No, no three-point heroics. He gives it up to Eric Devendorf, and the Orange take a one-point lead. Final seconds now. Georgetown playing for the last shot. Ashanti Cook gets trapped in the lane. He walked with it, turns it over, and Syracuse, another last-minute victory. They are moving on, guys. Wow, you got to be kidding me. So McNamara's offense and then an assist in a defensive play wins it for Syracuse. They're on a tear right now. North Carolina trying to survive Virginia. This is championship week presented by 7-Up and we're at the ACC quarterfinals in Greensboro's Coliseum. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dykes, Doris Burke with you. North Carolina has had to struggle because they played Virginia's pace in this ball game. And Tyler Hansbro has completed a three-point play that started before that timeout. He has 16 points and now with under... Four minutes to go. Carolina stretch it out to a double-digit advantage again. So Virginia's going to need heroics from Sean Singletary and J.R. Reynolds if they're to come back and upset North Carolina in this game tonight. They did not want to be double digits down with four to go, and they had a chance to cut it to five and turn that thing over. He just ran a mile with the ball. Yeah, well, he got away with it. Kane got his first field goal. I'm glad you said double digits down instead of me. <laughs> I got away with it, too. Single digits now. 67, 59. We approach the three-minute mark. Thomas, Noel, Terry, Gignard, and Noel going hard to the rack is fouled by Singletary. Guards have done a lot of... Uh, Damage off the balance. He took an extra step there, I thought. But the bigs of Virginia, they do, they do a pretty good job of drifting off of the drive of those guards. The more I watch, not always involved, but certainly try. David Noel, 10 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. That's kind of what he does all the time, it seems. Bobby Frazier's had some foul trouble tonight coming back in as we take a look at our ESPN2 stat track. North Carolina 21 out of 45, and of course Hansborough has done a bunch of that damage in the paint along with Rayshon Terry. David Noel, oops, both free throws. That left it open for Virginia a little bit. And now it's Singletary through traffic, the kick out. Reynolds got a three look in and out, and Singletary pulls it back out. And they are now in their quick triggered mode. They know the time's working against oh. them. There you go. What a shot that was. 24 for the little guy. They weren't in prime position at the four minute mark, but they're in this ball game now with 2.48 to go. That's the important factor. Half dozen down, 2.45. Hansbro faces up, draws traffic, dishes off. Ginyard underneath. 
Great look by the big guy. Brad, and the double team on Hansborough came too late. When he touched that ball with his paws, you've got to run at him, and they waited for him to go to the bounce, and that allowed him to make the pass. Reynolds is cut off. Singletary, and he's bumped by Frazier, and Frazier's gone. Fouls out with 2.15 to go. Roy Williams didn't like the call, thought that Sean Singletary leaned into him. So Bobby Frazier, the freshman in his first ACC tournament game, has not had one of his stellar performances this year. Singletary's a clever guy, though. I mean, he felt a little bit of contact and then leaned into it to make sure the official would make that call. He's and let's see, Quentin Thomas is going to come off the Carolina bench. Singletary trying to will his team to a victory like Jerry McNamara has done the last couple of nights. Two assists for Bobby, who had 125 assists coming into this game, and now the star of the night for Virginia, and he would definitely be the hero of the night if somehow they can come from behind. Career high just keeps adding to it. Ten rebounds, so what a double-double, 24 and 10. For the six-foot sophomore out of Philadelphia, you can add to it from the free-throw line right here. Cavaliers have made a living from the stripe tonight. They're the number three free throw shooting team in the league, and a lot of that has to do with Singletary and Reynolds tonight. 21 out of 23 from the free throw line. Reynolds missed one, and Nikolaus missed one. Other than that, they hit them all. And so now this can make it a five point game. They need a couple of more stops. Over the remaining 2.15 of this ball game, Virginia does. Singletary a perfect 10 from the stripe. 10 for 10. Five-point game. Here we go with just over two minutes to go in the ACC quarterfinals. Rayshon Terry pull up from 17, and he buried it. What a game he's had. 22 points for Rayshon Terry. Boy, that's right there is trusting your talent to make the right play. Singletary spinning in the lane, lost the ball to Thomas, now goes to the deck for it, and they'll keep the basketball with a possession error. Tell you what, there's going to be some floor burns when this one's done. Rayshon Terry did a great job of bringing that ball to the center of the floor. He was just centering the basketball to the middle of the floor, and once he got to that 16-foot mark, gets those shoulders squared up and dropped an important bucket. And again, they are 18-4 and four this year when he gets in double figures. The score now is starting to inch closer to what Carolina scores per ball game and out of Virginia's range. Jimmy said two hours ago, can Virginia find enough offense to even stay with a team that's averaging 80 a game? And now it's 71-64. That shot won't go. David Noel with a rebound. Singletary weaving through traffic, trying anything he can do to try to steal the ball. He is playing full blast on a bad hip and playing his heart out. Down to a minute and a half. Foul on Nikolaskis. Tangled up with Hansbrough. And that is four on Nikolaskis. And Hansbrough goes back to the strike. You know, to put it in perspective, how important is it to average 80 points a game like North Carolina has done this year? The last four national champions have averaged 81 points a game during the NCAA tournament. You've got to be able to score that basketball with ease at some point in a 40-minute ball game. Carolina could do it last year. UConn, a team that can do that kind of thing to you this year. Hansborough only got one out of two. And foul call. It's going to be on Junior. Uh, beg your pardon, Quentin Thomas. That's his third. Quick foul stops the clock. <laughs> and Roy didn't like the defense there. This morning at the hotel, though, we visited for, again, about a half an hour. Boy, you could just see the glee and the joy in his eyes when he talked about his kids this year. Has challenged them. They've responded. 
getting through uh, 88 practices, I think. He's only walked out of that gym twice, frustrated with his kids, a complete reversal of what he had last year to work with. Again, last year, he had to keep the pressure on his kids. This year, he's had to keep the pressure off of them. Sign of a masterful coach, in my opinion. And Sean Singletary calmly knocks down two more free throws. He is perfect from the stripe tonight, 12 for 12. Still a six-point game, still in doubt with a minute 24 to go. And they're going to give Singletary just a little rest, I guess. And we'll probably come right back in. That was a quick rest. That was just like uh, walking over there, never sitting down and heading back. It was a one-second respite. I hope he I hope he got all he could out of that. Now he's going to take a knee. Boy, what a night he's had. Big double double. Kept his team in it the whole game. Just a lot of desire inside that 44 jersey that Sean Singletary wears at 511. If you don't have a lot of desire and a lot of heart and a lot of moxie and ultra competitive, it is tough to compete at this level. J.R. Reynolds, who got him here with a big night last night and the win over Virginia Tech. So the Virginia backcourt has certainly played brilliantly here in Greensboro. They need a quick, good shot. A quick, bad shot doesn't do him any good. Singletary trying to shake free. Miller won't let him. They do find the open three, and that's a guy that hit one from that spot earlier. Kane gets the offensive rebound. Rejected by Hansbro. Carolina coming down three on one. Terry up, got it. His second highlight of the night. 24 for Rayshon Terry. And now Wes Miller takes the ball away and there's a scramble for it. Boy, what a block by Hansborough. His dad, a former two-time Big 8 high jump champion. And look at the lift out of Hansborough with his left hand. And he bats it in play. Look at him. Doesn't knock it out of bounds. Knocks it in play where it's a rip and run to the other end for Carolina. That's where they thrive. Terry goes for the dagger on the fast break with 51 seconds left. 16 this half for Rayshon Terry. And he's only one point shy of his career high. That was against Kentucky. So what a time to have one of the best games of your life in the ACC tournament. Fifty one point three to go in North Carolina leading by nine Duke had its hands full today. They survived a hurricane warning. That's for sure. J.J. Reddick kind of snapped out of his shooting slump. He ended up with twenty five points with the high flying hurricanes gave Duke all the trouble they could handle twenty five including this one. This was really the shot that won it behind the back up with a jumper. 25 for J.J. Sheldon Williams had his sixth straight double-double, and the Blue Devils held on 80 to 76. So they'll play Wake Forest. Wake Forest has been the surprise, the 12th seed. They won the first night, then they beat North Carolina State rather handily today, so they meet Duke tomorrow at 1.30. And the winner of this one, North Carolina or Virginia, meets the winner of the Boston College-Maryland game that will follow us here from Greensboro, North Carolina. Boy, if you're one of those teams right now that's uh, facts in the selection committee, all the reasons why you should be in, you do not want South Carolina, Wake Forest, or Oregon in the Pac-10 to win their conference tournament. They will steal a bid if that happens. South Carolina upset Tennessee today if you missed it. Wake Forest obviously would have to go through Duke. Maryland getting ready. They want to get their 20th win to assure themselves a trip to the NCAA. I think right now Maryland is probably uh, 36th on the list of 34 at larges. You log on to ESPN.com and hit Bracketology, and that's where they're projected. It's amazing how accurate Joe Lenardi is with his picks year in and year out. But a win coming up here tonight against Boston College. Maryland goes from 36th to end the field. They would eliminate all doubts with a win about a half an hour from tonight when it tips off. So the lead swells. Twelve point cushion. It is 78 66 unless our scoreboards are all wrong. And Virginia running out of time. And truck tells us that we are right and the scoreboards are wrong. So I stand corrected for the guys back in the truck. Miller on the drive. He's had a nice night offensively. He gives him a little something extra. He hit three big threes in the first half. 
And he has 15 points now, so great balance on the attack tonight for North Carolina as well. And they're going to be advancing. The number two seed will go on. But Virginia really showed up tonight and played very, very well. Roy Williams' team will go to 22 and 6. And 12 and 4 in the regular season, but they'll add one ACC win to it. Cavaliers of Dave Lato look like they're going to finish 15 and 14. And might be good enough for an NIT bid and maybe one more game at U Hall if they get a home game. Now they've corrected all the scoreboards in the building. They've laid those seven wins in the ACC this year, the most uh, for Virginia since 2002. So it was a solid foundation year for Dave Lato and his staff. Well, the two guards for Virginia can go home and say, you know what, we laid it all out there against the number 10 team in the country. We just came out a little bit short because they're going to. But uh, between the two of them, they had quite a night. Just a little bit too much Rayshon Terry, a little bit too much Tyler Hansgrove, a little bit too much of North Carolina as they're going to win it by a final of 79 to 67. And as much as Virginia controlled the pace and the flow of the speed of the game, you look up at the end, North Carolina still hangs 79 points on the scoreboard, partner. Exactly what you called, and Virginia couldn't score enough to hang with them. 79-67, so an updated look at the brackets. It's Duke and Wake Forest tomorrow, and now we've added the number two seed, North Carolina, the 10th ranked team in the land, and they'll take on either Boston College 